got the bed out of the camper and got the side outs removed both of them I'm letting this air out and dry what I had to do was uh, use the reciprocating saw to cut some retainer um, tabs on here and then I was able to slide the extensions out because we're not going to use them this was a long hard decision for me and once I made up my mind that I wasn't going to use the slide outs Melanie and I discussed it and uh, even after that I thought about it long and hard for a while whether we wanted to use the slide outs or not in this camper and we both decided no so this is sufficient for Melanie and I I folded it up because once the um, water damage dries out I'm gonna close this all in and drop the ceiling and then put the put a tarp over it for now so I folded it down but here we would have our dining area or double bed for us to sleep on our entire kitchen and the baby bed area so we don't need those side pop-outs so what we're gonna do is we are going to edit um, we're gonna take the roof the, that was the pop-out roof and make that the sidewall of the camper so we'll have a square camper so what we've done is reduced a lot of weight which means I can carry some of my camping gear permanently in here and without the slide outs in the way I could always open a door and reach in and grab something or just raise the ceiling up a little if I want to get something down in here so that's an advantage and like I said it was a long hard decision but we decided this is what we wanted to do and so we've done it I think I will open some windows and get some airflow in here to help blow out the uh, any any wet areas so well it's breezy and sunny today and then um, next time it rains I'll have this tarped up anyway that's what's going on here so far today getting the camper winterized now that it's it's breezier getting this camper winterized getting the uh, getting things put together and ready to go there we go that allows the air to flow through here nicely and right now it's just open on the sides so I'll have to stuff that in we'll have to carefully cut along the edges and keep this heavier duty material the roof of this of the pop outs of the slide outs and then have velcro we're gonna sew in some velcro along the sides and that roof when we're uh, when we're camping that roof will come where that that material here will come across and velcro on and we'll have ourselves a uh, closed-in camper see because the mice had done some damage here see and I decided instead of repairing it oh look there curiosity instead of repairing it we're just gonna make it a square camper on our solar panels here um, people have wondered they thought they might be props because they're not um, at the right angle the problem is we get a lot of wind and I have them low to the ground so they don't blow away like often happen in pine bush I realize for optimum solar charging I need to prop them up better but they're gonna go over where I park my car very soon here so that won't matter soon over here this is the light that I use every night in the bedroom and Melanie uses another right here and we do charge this with the Sun when the Sun is available using folding solar panels and this is the real deal this is what we really use at night inside our nearly off-grid tiny house uh, we each have a light that we use as needed and uh, carry them around and this will last a week or so on a charge hey guys I just cut these boards laid them down and then I put the box on measured out the perimeter of the uh, battery box and I've got level here I've got level here I'm level here not here the middle of that one's off okay I'm level here 
So the middle of this block, I wonder if there's some stuff on that block. This one here is off. It's odd that just one piece of one block is off. Interesting. Everything else is level. I've got to fix that middle block somehow. Whatever the reason is. Or that one right there. That, that end is lower than this end. Very odd because everything else is perfect. Well, I'll get that figured out and then I'm ready to put the battery box on. Uh, I've got to check the weather because we only got a very short period of daylight left and uh, I also want to check see if I'm going to go hunting this evening or not because it's getting about that time. So I'm not doing a lot of video these days because of all the the hunting. So we'll see what happens here. Hey guys, today was finally sunny and somewhat warm at 43, 44 degrees. And I, today I wound the coil for the Bedini motor. So go ahead and check out, uh, give me time to get this processed, and go ahead and check out the do-it-yourself world electronics and see how to make your own Bedini motor step-by-step, -step, restore lead-acid batteries, and potentially power your house. And we're going to go through the whole process from beginning to end and tuning and uh, adjusting and improving the Bedini motor, also called the Bedini monopole or the Bedini SSG. There's the coil. That's just this here. This is my coil winding jig. Check out the do-it-yourself world electronics. Another thing I was doing this afternoon when it was nice out. Hey guys, I uh, just finished a batch of wood stove soap so we used the I got an old Dutch oven and I had this on the wood stove and I cooked the soap down it's called the hot process soap and I cooked it fully down here on the wood stove and I've got 15 bars of soap curing now actually it'll be ready to use tomorrow once this has cooled down and solidified I can slice it and it'll be ready to use tomorrow and we'll be giving that away. I did a separate video on that and an article so watch for that coming soon. And that's a piece of deer guys that's all I'm gonna show you and all I'm gonna tell you but that's a piece of deer that we're processing and um, that's you know that's what I've been doing all day out in the garage or afternoon or evening afternoon whatever. I went hunting and uh, then I went up cleaned up my stuff and now I've been working on this. Melanie's cooking over here so pretty soon we'll be eating. Looks like our own homegrown chicken. Hi Michelle. Hey hello. She does pay attention when she wants to. Believe me, her hearing is good. Um, so now she caught my age. Now she saw me. There's little Michelle, always moving, kicking and kicking and kicking. Not moving very much now, but usually she's moving like mad. She's getting really smart. She's actually smiling now. But, Michelle, you gonna smile at me? You're just making weird faces at me, huh? 